In the event of a puncture for both these cars, the blue car survives and pulls over, while the red car ends up in a fatal accident. To understand why this is the case, look no further than the tires. The car that crashed has tubed tires, and the one that survived has tubeless ones. Before understanding tubeless tires, we must first look at the basics of tubed tires. In order to inflate the tire, we never fill the air inside the tire directly. The rubber of the tire is permeable. This is because it is chemically processed to achieve good strength. Therefore, if we fill it with air directly, the air will leak out through the material's small pores. The solution is to keep an impermeable rubber tube inside the tire. If you fill this tube with air, there won't be any leakage. This is a good design. However, if a nail pierces the tube, air will suddenly leak out of it. Let's pause here. Now, we have two design options. We can either leave the valve not attached to the rim, or we can fix the valve with the rim. Which option is best? Majority of the air particles which are leaking out from the tube puncture are trapped between the tube and the tire. If we leave the valve loose, Obviously, the valve will fall within the rim. All the air will quickly rush out through the valve hole, and the tire flattens out. However, with the second option, since the valve is fixed, the air will be trapped between the tire and tube, and deflation could be a slow process. So, is the fixed valve design your choice? If so, this will lead to a catastrophe. The issue is that if the high-pressure air cannot escape from the tube, then the tire will go for a blast, as shown. Due to this, the valve is not fitted to the rim in the tubed tire design. In the tubed tire case, we must allow the sudden escape of air to save the tire. Another important aspect of the tire is to ensure that the tire always remains inside the rim, even when the vehicle takes sharp turns. Here, a pair of metallic beads is inserted inside the tire. As this tire flattens suddenly, its radius is reduced and it will now have a lower velocity at the contact point. This situation will lead to a differential action, where the car will have an instantaneous turn. As the driver attempts to rotate the car in the opposite direction by steering, the car becomes uncontrollable, resulting in a devastating accident. Now it's time to explore how the tubeless tire overcomes such fatal accidents, with the help of an interesting sticky tape balloon experiment. Here I have a balloon with me is obviously impermeable. But here the main issue is that in case of a small puncture, the balloon just <coughs> explodes. Here's the main test. When the balloon has a sticky tape around it, when I prick it with a needle, it just goes for a very slow leakage and never burst. This interesting combination of sticky tape balloon forms the foundation of the tubeless tears. First, we must explore why the balloon popped in the first place. The compressed air inside the inflated balloon keeps it in tension. When you puncture this balloon with a needle, the compressed air will rush out through this narrow gap. This escaping air will generate radial force on the balloon, thus expanding the punctured hole. The air rushes out quickly due to this. The same thing happens with a tube also, and air rushes out quickly. What happens with the sticky tape is interesting. When you puncture with a needle, here also, the puncture wants to expand due to the radial forces, but the sticky tape won't allow that. Thus, the opening remains the same, and the air leaks out slowly. Now, let's extend this fundamental knowledge to create a tubeless tire. Consider this inflated tube. It is impermeable, making it equivalent to the balloon we looked at before. The tube needs good structural support against sudden deflation. Instead of using sticky tape, we can simply glue pieces of normal tire around the tube. Now, when you puncture the tire, it will not suddenly deflate. Instead, the air will leak out slowly and steadily. Hooray! We have now achieved a safer tire, so no sudden tire flats. To make this design more practical, let's remove the inside region of the tube, and this tube material stuck to the tire arrangement is fitted with a rim. This rim has a hole to fit the valve. The valve is inserted from the inside portion of the rim, and it is made so that when pulled out, it locks properly. There you have it, a tubeless tire. The new tubeless tire design will only be leak-proof with some specially designed rims. First, let's try out the old rim and see what happens. Here, 
The pressurized air can easily escape as shown. To make the tire airproof, the tubeless tire needs a good locking mechanism. This is why engineers added an additional protrusion called a hump on the rim. This perfectly locks the tire onto the rim so that the air doesn't escape at all. However, this presents a new challenge. With the tire bead, the tire has less flexibility. How can we then get it to fit on the rim? Engineers have come up with a clever solution for this problem. They made the rim well asymmetrical in shape as shown. For this rim design, fitting the tire is easily possible by applying force in a particular way as shown. Please note the bead is just slightly allowed to stretch and the tire fits perfectly. Only the upper right side bead will face some difficulty in fitting. This region also can be fitted when you fill the tire with the compressed air. Did you know that tubeless tires have a self-repairing mechanism? This is a latex-based sealant method. Watch how this liquid self-repairs this hole. To ensure that the latex sealant performs as intended, you will have to refill it with a new one every three to four months. Here's an interesting question. Can you convert a tubed tire to a tubeless tire in practice? Yes, you can. The only condition here is that your rim must have the hump to provide airtight locking. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.